as with everything in agriculture, we are allowed to consume about just 5 to 10 percent. For example, as you can see, the coconuts are this in size, and the husk would be approximately all this from one coconut. And uh, that means even the shell of the coconuts is, goes into the garden. So this is the way that nature wants us to eat and wants us to consume. Uh, it packages stuff in uh, uh, packaging material which is recyclable, which is called organic carbon after a while. And uh, we are supposed to consume what the food is, the matter, the glucose, the proteins, the carbohydrates that are there in the coconut, the elements that are there and then give back to nature, give back to Mother Earth what is um, left behind in the form of uh, decomposition or we can say uh, maybe feed it to the earthworms so and mostly what people do is burn the things so you should avoid that um, I also want to show you a technique of uh, putting the coconuts for a longer duration when you um, de-shell, I mean it's when you just remove the flakes of the coconuts um, this is a, a, not a dry coconut, but this is just uh, one with water. So when you cut the top part of it, that uh, actually preserves the bottom part where there is the hole. So for example, these are coconuts already dry. So you can see there are three holes always on the coconut. So when the bottom part is covered, like the way it's covered here, the coconut will actually stay fresh. Uh, mostly what I see in India is that people just go for the bottom part because it's soft and uh, then the coconut goes bad because the air enters from these three holes and the coconut goes bad in a couple of days. So when you are removing the cover of the coconut, you make sure that the top part of the cover is removed and the bottom part is just kept intact. You can see the coconut was joined here to the tree and uh, when you remove the top part of it like this, this coconut can be consumed even after two weeks, it will not go bad and to be as fresh as it is. Uh, it, it depends on how ripe the coconut is. This is quite uh, ripe, as you can see if I hang it with the opposite side of the edge, it's making that sound. So this is actually, this can stay uh, good for at least two to three weeks. But if it is um, like for example this one, just, we just had this, so if it is this one, this is softer and so this can stay for about a week, week and a half and after it has to be consumed. So again you can see the bottom part is not, um, the cover is not removed, just the top part is removed. So this is how actually it's supposed to be done, this is how they do it in Africa also. They cut out the top part and the coconut stays fresh even if you leave it like this in their room and then when you just want to eat it, just go that way and hit it. You usually hit the, with the bottom part if it's a hard one. So you crack open the edges and then you just flick off the cover. So that's how you cut off the coconut with this hard part. Okay, uh, since this is a coconut which has um, a little bit of uh, hardness to it, what I'm going to show you how to de-husk it this way and keep it in your kitchen. Um, you first make some uh, cuttings all around the coconut and how do you do that is not by placing it on a hard floor because if you put it on a hard floor and you go like that and you whack the coconut you might even have a chance of injuring yourself so what you do is you place it in your hand so the moment the knife goes and cut, tries to cut the coconut there is a sort of a, a sort of um, balancing act that is happening the momentum is lost if you keep it here the momentum goes all the way to the core and it can even crack the shell and when that happens, the coconut goes back. So you need to keep it in the air. Go like that. One. Rotate it a little bit. Two. There are also chances of you getting injured or less like this. Three. Four. Depends on how many... Uh, the slices depends on how much effort you want to put at the end. So the more the slices, the easier it is to open up. You can see I'm placing my hand below and as the blade is coming down I'm I'm like literally opening my fingers yeah so that's how I do it you can see that that's how I do it so that's very important also you have to be very careful with this these are very sharp blades okay so we have gotten about uh, about 
eight to ten cuttings, and then what we do is we go to the behind part of it and just sort of flick like that. So you have one opening there, and then you look at the other line that you made. You just go into that line, and you go into a line. This is the previous line that was cut just now. Just flick it like that. You have to be very careful with the thumb. It's needed to grip it also, but at the same time the knife can come on it. You have to be very careful with these things. Of course, this happens when you are actually rehusking the coconut at home. Like uh, most of the time, what happens is if you don't have a farm, you go, you cut the coconut. The guy just gives you the water and you leave. What he does with the shells is completely different uh, compared to what you do with the shells. Like all this, you can see. All this is going to go in the garden, and this is going to be homes for microorganisms, earthworms. Uh, it'll take a long time to decompose because all this is made of very hard and sturdy stuff. You can accelerate this uh, decomposition by like chopping it a little bit more, but uh, I'm not worried about that too much because we have a lot of organic carbon. We don't need it so much, so let it decompose slowly. So I'll just finish up the video by showing you how we can dehusk the coconut at home if it's uh, a little bit riper than, it, than it's needed for the consumption of water. So I'm just going through the lines that I made previously. You can make new lines if you want. Again, same way, go down and you open the wigners. That's the way. It goes almost till the, till the shell of the coconut and then you just remove it again and place the point where you had made the incision and then go from behind. From behind, you just flick it like that. You see what I'm doing? Slowly, effort has to be slow. There's no need for brute force. Just go with a slow. I, I don't see the line. For example, if I lose a line, um, it helps to remove this cap. So we just remove that cap. Uh, I don't see the line. So what I'll do is just make another one. And then, just flick it again. You can go the other way also, or you can go this way also. Can see how easily it comes off if you do it like that. Um, these are all the small tactics of dehusking the coconut. So you can see it's almost ready to be kept on the shelf. So we have just almost dehusked the coconut. You have to have strong arms to do this at the end. So and this is great exercise. I mean, uh, I don't know about uh, people uh, going to the gym or whatever. You're using all your effort and all your might and you're using your hand-eye coordination. So it's not a repetitive task like the ones you go to the gym. This is a task that requires a lot of uh, attention and it's almost therapeutic when you do this kind of thing. At least it's therapeutic to me. So uh, yeah, so that's the coconut. I leave uh, a bit of it there so that I leave a bit of it there so that it stays fresh. If you remove this part, the coconut goes bad. So you need to keep the flesh a little bit over there. So this can be consumed within say, maybe a week or two. Um, because if you keep it for long, then the microorganisms and the bacterial infection starts happening from here and goes and spoils the coconut. So yeah, that's it. Okay, so we are off to the garden and uh, placing all this compost wood waste this waste is from eight coconuts and I just like to show you what cocoa peat is made of is all this so basically when the husk of the coconut is squashed and um, remove the green layer and you just get this part this meat which is there so that's the cocoa peat so this is all the full of nutrients and um, uh, places for small houses for the old microorganisms so you need to take care of this that this is not just waste it is a, a complete um, bio waste so we're just going to take this to the garden now so I'm just going to simply just place it on the garden instead of uh, planting anything we're just going to spread it on the garden this helps the plants recover from the heat that is on right now you can see I'm just randomly just placing it on top of the surface, not caring too much about where and how. That's all the work for the microorganisms to take care of that, how to eat up that organic waste. We have a small bottle guard plant here, 
so what we'll do is we'll maybe just place it on the side like that so the root structure of the plant stays cool because the sun will not hit it directly as it is we have the shadow of the tree above us so that's also helping it in the shade so this is how we are just getting rid of the organic waste and that's how you do the organic waste money